Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. In this flight, flight number 12, I'm flying from Birmingham to London in a C-47. Specifically the C-47 that went first across the English Channel on D-Day. That's all brother. And I was inspired to uh, pick this plane because of a Twitch uh, broadcasts from Das Valdez who uh, did uh, broadcasts from D-Day anniversary uh, commemorations in Britain as well as in France. So uh, he got to see this plane up close and personal, uh, but I get to fly a simulation of it at least. So here we go. And this is a freeware plane. The, the camo is not uh, one that is for this plane. I adapted a camo for another DC-3 slash C-47 uh, to work with this plane. So I did some Photoshop with that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, this is a really good DC-3 considering it's freeware and it is available on the forums so the the model is available on the forums for free uh, the camo the delivery is not so yep and really the delivery needs some work uh, there are inaccuracies that I'm not satisfied with but it'll uh, do fine for now so yeah I mean feast your eyes on this it's really good and uh, really nice so but uh, we'll take the takeoff from the exterior view and unfortunately we have flickery ground but we'll fly higher this time than last time uh, we have flickery ground because of the clouds and the weird lighting effect that's going on uh, we will continue with the Apollo 12 audio excuse me and uh, yep pick it up from where we left off if it will play well, at some point I'll start. Okay, uh, somebody had asked uh, for me to say what I'm doing during the flights. I don't do a whole lot, to be honest. Uh, monitoring the situation. Audio is not starting for some reason. Um, so I lo lowered the flaps one notch. You can see they're a tiny little bit down. And I will be moving the throttle up smoothly with propeller planes and anything that generates a whole lot of torque. It's not good to just slam the throttle up very quickly. So release the brakes, throttle up gently. And then I will be managing the rudder for quite a while while pulling up lightly on the stick. And I guess after takeoff, I'll manage what the heck is going on with Apollo 12. So even though I'm pulling back lightly on the stick, the wheel is off the ground, you'll notice. And if I pull back just a little bit more, we get off the ground. And then I raise the landing gear and raise the flaps. And we are airborne. And then I start doing the elevator trim, which is on the hat switch of my joystick, pulling it up or pushing it down as necessary to get us the climb rate that I want. So I'm not actually pulling on the stick in order to get the climb rate. Okay, well, the audio isn't playing right now. Hold on. Let me troubleshoot this now that we're in flight. Okay, I think I need to, like, reload it. Sorry, the, the audio file is very big and sitting in Sony Vegas, so it's a little bit awkward. Meanwhile, the reason I get to stay in this external view is because I've got the internal, I've got the information in a separate window. Mainly, it's just the map, the speed, and the altitude. And right now, and of course, the map shows the direction I'm flying in as well. And I'm flying in the wrong direction. So I'm banking to the right. And we are still climbing very gently, not very fast. Okay, let's see if we can begin the audio. There we go. Ridiculous. Yeah, wait a minute, I'll get it for you. Yeah, I don't know where you put it. Where'd you put the half of it? Can you see the straight wall now, Houston? Yes, sir, we can see it very good. Just beyond that uh, large crater with another uh, smaller 
crater and its rim, and uh, we can see the wall on beyond it. So now I'm using the elevator trim to trim down because I feel like the climb is going a little bit fast. You got this little chart right here. And then uh, pulling it up uh, again. Since the update, we've been here 56 minutes, so use the 56 minute data. I'm going to move off the straight uh, wall now, Houston. There is information I need from in here. First of all, I had the mixture in the wrong position, so I've just corrected that. And I'm adjusting the RPM. And let me see if I can get it better for you. And the manifold pressure. And it also has a nice crack right down at the bottom. Roger, we can see that. That's a pretty impressive looking crater. So those aren't in the yellow zone mainly. I didn't want them in the yellow zone. We're at the Terry now, and you can tell that the ground is uh, much so they're more basically humming, safe and now. quite a bit rougher than uh, the Mari, which we're getting ready to approach in a few moments. The yellow zone on the RPM and the and the mixture uh, and the manifold it's pressure are supposedly not sustainable for long periods. Okay, we're getting knocked about a bit. Still climbing. That's a hard one to show because the uh, radar antenna of the limb is partially eclipsing it. Can you see that central peak there? That's the firm work. I called. So we're getting a good. The rim itself. Okay. Normally a plane is only at full throttle right at the start for takeoff. So we are still doing a fairly gentle climb. It's a lot lower now as we approach the uh, Terminator. Things are much more in relief. Let me uh, point the camera back past the straight wall again. Let me give you another view of that because it's coming in even greater relief from this angle. Then I'll go back and give you the horizon because that's one of the most impressive things right here. Take a look at those mountains. Uh, we have them. I'm sort of looking around for fuel information. I see the fuel pressure. We talked about earlier that looked like from a distance, like little clouds over the bar. You can see how bright they are relative to the bar surface. And yeah, maybe even on the TV, they look like uh, puffy clouds. However, they're not. They look like pretty hard rock down there. But I understand they are not clouds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I couldn't find my fuel quantity anywhere. It should be there somewhere. Then again, maybe they just know. That's something out your window, Dick. Repeat. So, I, my hand is off the it's control dark. stick right now. It's getting dark. I'm not directly controlling well, this. A high mountain right there on the horizon. I bet you, you see that. Uh, and very there high is no autopilot active either. Houston's about in the center of the screen now. That's All you can see is the uh, reflected light. That's affirmative. We haven't. I'm pointing at London, so I'm just going to level off. So now a little bit of control stick, and then off well, Houston, again. Well, can you open your f-stop, Benny? Uh, get in this dim light. That'll help it, we'll try. Hmm, certain angles seem to make the clouds clip into the ground in a way I don't like. And, yep, for the most part, what continues on is just managing heading. Um, altitude will largely manage itself with the ele elevator trim, the pitch trim, and the velocity but I might trim down a little bit in order to uh, keep at this altitude. We seem to be above the clouds for the most I'll part. Already. And I don't want to go to where we need, like, sure masks. We're about 8,000 feet right now. There's an interesting feature down there that you're looking at near that uh, large crater. We're over Coventry. Uh, there uh, seems to be a general trending of uh, ridges in this area 
all in the same direction. They'd be running, I guess, on your camera from the top right-hand corner to the lower left. And uh, it's particularly evident down there by the uh, large crater that's uh, in your picture. How do we see that? There it is. That, you see it? That's firm. Interesting. There's, uh, I guess it's probably parallel to the Let me show you some more of these clouds. I think you'll like them. They just seem to be large bumps on top of the bar. Hey, let me, let me show the moisting. Over okay, here. there you go. All right. Moisting uh, is coming into view. Yeah, the shoulders down is up to the north. Right, yeah. you know, well, you can open it again if you want. It's the close one in. Boy, it's beautiful right in. Look at that crater. Wow. Easy 3 is always a remarkably nice looking plane, especially with its elegant wing. For this camo, I I made it probably duller than it ought to be. I didn't give it shiny bits. There are other DC3 slash C47s that are certainly shinier. Yeah, the significance of the five degree sun angle is that was the the minimum sun angle for the missions, and they didn't want too much above that because they wanted to be able to see the craters. Okay, that's coming in good, Al. Not being able to see the craters would make landing tough. So again, uh, right now we are basically where I want to be as far as altitude. We're at 9,600-ish and descending a little bit. Hey Paul, all I can say it's another part of pilot's life. Hours and hours. Roger. How's that look, Houston? That's looking good, Al. And for the most part, uh, except for light touches here, here and there. I don't do much uh, steering. By the low sun, while down inside the crater it's dark. And you can see the ray patterns from here. And you can see the Mari surface. It almost looks like somebody took a, some cake icing and uh, spread it with a big knife. Laid it all around out there and then somebody shot some DVs in it. It really is beautiful. It's got that layering all over it. Yeah, this is the autopilot here if I chose to use it. And that, such as it is. Got something over there? Let me hand it back to you. Okay. Fantastic. Down in a terminator. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> I wanted to change the mixture to see if I could get some more half pressure. 
I think we're just where we are. That's why I wouldn't get any good for photography out of it. The sun's really shining right on it now. But we can see all that stuff. Feet, however, uh, we're getting a good picture through it uh, in the open spaces. My throttle seems a bit flickery, though. I guess Copernicus is too far up there to see. Is it Dick, or can you see it? Sure, the right we Yeah. I guess we passed it a bit ago. Pretty sure it should be a little bit brighter than it is right now. Delivery, I mean. And that's a criticism of my own work here. In terms of applying this delivery to this plane. The actual artwork was somebody else's work. Again, I'm just, I just. Uh, tried to apply it to this plane instead of the original it was meant for. to see along this route towards London. We're basically next to the M45, approaching uh, Milton Keys and uh, Bletchley. Well, Houston, uh, for information, all spacecraft systems are in excellent shape. 12, Roger. Thank you. The town directly in front of us with uh, bunch of roads leading to it is uh, Toadchester. This is Apollo Control. We're showing the spacecraft now in an orbit of 168.7 by 62.6 and at the present time nearing Apogee, or I should say Apolloon, the uh, current altitude 167.8 nautical miles. The city to our left is Northampton. Twelve Houston, uh, map update when you're ready. is the M1 actually and that we should probably follow that as the name suggests I believe it leads to London one would assume a highway called the M1 would could be wrong as far as speed is concerned I see 164 
not syndicated airspeed. Hello, 12, Houston, uh, on the ground, we're seeing some changes in signal strength. Basically 10,000 feet. Uh, have you changed any of your communications modes uh, recently? We're uh, past the halfway point in the flight. Hello, 12 Houston, five minutes to LOS. We'll see you in 49 minutes. Now just trying to find the best. Roger, oh, that's, that's we're, good. We're uh, settled down to a nice meal and we're allowing ourselves a little music on the tape recorder. Probably don't yeah, need we'll the nose lights the on at this time. Okay, Let's who see. won the vote on what you're playing on a tape recorder? We've been very democratic. We play a little bit of house, a little bit go. of dicks, and a little bit of mine. That's nice. Generally not in And yes, a, a substantial part of my flight time is simply choosing good camera angles. This is Apollo <laughs> Control at 85 of hours, 7 minutes. Flight Director Glenn Lunny now going around the room getting a final status before loss of signal. Uh, we will be losing contact with Apollo 12 in 1 minute 40 seconds. Reacquiring again at 85 hours, 52 minutes, 26 seconds. Big fluffy clouds. We've got a lot of We're big fluffy clouds. Loss of signal. Everything looking good as the spacecraft goes around the corner. We'll be reacquiring in a little less than 44 minutes. Turning to follow the M1 on the map here. Uh, directly in front of us is Luton and the London Luton Airport. Uh, humorously, often humorously noted because. Um, it is very, very, very far from London. <laughs> I mean, for, for something called the London Airport. Somebody had mentioned that uh, Toronto International is technically outside Toronto metropolitan area, the um, technical boundaries of that. And that's not unusual for a city. Uh, the degree to which London Luton Airport is outside of London is quite amazing and excessive because, of course, there are other London airports, including Heathrow and uh, the London City Airport and Gatwick. 
why 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 the Luton Airport needs to be called London Luton, I don't know, but it's a bit of false advertising. And we've had loss of signal now. Acquisition to occur in 43 minutes, 24 seconds. Apollo 12 currently in an orbit, 168.7 by 62.5. The orbital period is 2 hours, 8 minutes, 48 seconds. We're reading... Uh, an orbital weight of 71,983 pounds at the present time. And as uh, we lost acquisition with the spacecraft, all systems looking very good. At 85 hours, 10 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. I'll start descending a bit, though. Far from London, though we are. Be good to see the sights if we can get below the clouds. This is Apollo Control at 86 hours 12 minutes. During the replay of the videotape from the television transmission, we reacquired Apollo 12 on schedule. We've been in contact with the this spacecraft is now for about 19 minutes. We'll pick up the uh, tape recording we have of the uh, conversation about three minutes up to now, and then continue to stand by for live conversations. Hello, 12 Houston. We'll fly over Luton Airport Hello, and then Hello, over Hello, London Hello, and then land at First Heathrow. Name, uh, in an attempt to troubleshoot this. Uh, Variation in signal strength, which we experienced. So I uh, throttled down to 50%, and that's sufficient we for descent. The position that you had the high gain antenna track switch in at that time, please. With the trim as it is, is it now? if you just throttle down, oh, okay. the plane will I'll start descending because it's not going as fast. Roger, react. Roger, react. Roger, react. Uh, thank you, and, uh, still in react now. Okay, I understand, and uh, I've got an update to your CSM That's alternate loud. contingency checklist, if you want to break it out. I think it'll get softer eventually. Okay, can you call us that? Whoa, so I need no clouds. And clouds. Okay, uh, on page 1-32, Dick. Okay, uh, go ahead. Okay, and call him Charlie. Can we Say again. Go ahead. Okay, and call him Charlie. Line seven. The number was formerly two seven three four zero. Change that to read two two four three four. This puts in the new uh, Delta H from your P twenty three. Okay, well, we can't see it very well now, but we're over London Luton Airport okay, right now. Be advised we dump the wastewater to 10% purge the fuel cell. Uh, understand, 12. And uh, 12 Houston, I've got your map update for Rev 3. Okay, right, go ahead. Okay, the numbers are 87. One seven zero niner. Trying to get around this Eight cloud seven, to see it. Three niner four zero. Eight eight zero one two two. Over. Uh wow, the cloud just steadfastly covered the airport. Alright. That's firm. Turning towards St. Albans. Hello, 12 Houston. If you'll give us pull and accept, we'll give you a state vector and a target load. All yours. Thank you. Hello, 12 Houston. The computer is yours. Okay, Houston. Thank you. I think you can see the airport right there at our tail. Hello, Apollo 12 Houston. I have. Pads for you when you're ready it's to just the one runway. 
Roger, Houston, go ahead, we're ready to copy. Okay, first pad is LOI-2. That's an SBS GNN. 3-8-6-2-7. Plus, 1-4-5. Minus, 0-6-6. 087-484739er minus 01-39er-2 plus 00-001 minus 00-89er-5 360-220. This city to our right is St. Albans. 00-662 plus 00-541. 01-655. 017. 0-1-5-9-4. Your sextant star is Fomahot, 4-5-2-9-6-6-2-7-3. Your ollage will be two jets for 19 seconds. Your sextant star will be occulted by the moon until 87 hours. Over. Roger. Uh, would you just give me the uh, now 47 again? Roger, that's 38627. We're at uh, 3,700 feet and I'm retrimming the to this altitude, so trying to keep it level here. Okay, LOI 2, SPS CNN, 38627, And since I'm doing that, I need to speed up just a little bit. 0874847392. So I'll throw it up to 75%. Plus, four balls, one. Minus zero zero eight nine five three six zero two two zero three six zero 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 six six two plus zero zero five four one. Okay, so here we're crossing the M25, which is the outer ring road around London. And I'm going to activate the 3J FPS with extreme prejudice. <laughs> You can see some buildings four, zero, at London on the horizon three, two, there. Three, five, plus three, seven, four, five, one, plus one, zero, zero, six, eight, minus zero, two, seven, five, seven, NA, zero, eight, one. The rest of the pad is NA. Your LH is four jets for 11 seconds. That's an undocked burn and assumes LOI-2. Over. So this time they had to do ullage and they okay. said four jets for 11 seconds to sell the fuel down. Minus 064 plus 055 
Uh, it's very Minus sticky zero, right now because seven, London has a lot NA, of scenery. Zero, eight, one. Rest of data is NA. I believe you said four jet, 11 seconds, assumed LOI 2. That's affirmative, and that's an undocked burn, and your yaw trim for now. It doesn't 48. even feel like 12 it's frames per second, but zero, whatever. Five, zero. Over. Probably slow down a bit, maybe hey, that'll help. This is why they put the airports well outside the city boundaries, because otherwise they get low frames. <laughs> That's a secret. That's why. This is Apollo Control. That brings us up to date with the tape playback. We'll continue to stand by live now for the rest of this frontside pass. Currently, our displays uh, here in Mission Control show the spacecraft at an altitude of 130 point eight nautical miles our current uh, these are actually reservoirs are apparently nine point five by sixty one point six and we show a uh, combined weight of the CSM lamb in orbit of seventy two thousand two hundred twelve pounds included in the uh, series of numbers read up to the crew were the uh, numbers that they will use for the lunar orbit insertion two maneuver. The burn which essentially circularizes the orbit, uh, changing the orbit from a 169.5 by 61.6 .6 to a uh, 54 by 66 nautical mile orbit. Now this orbit is, is targeted so that uh, by the time the LAM is ready to lift off from the moon and complete the rendezvous sequence with the orbiting command module, it should be essentially circular at about 60 nautical miles. The LOI-2 ignition is set for 87 hours, 48 minutes, 47 seconds. The total delta V uh, will be 161.6 feet per second a total burn time of 17.07 seconds. I'm wondering what that stadium is. Or it looks like a stadium anyway. Sorry about the choppiness, but again, it is because of the local scenery. I thought I disabled the scenery package that was really intense, but maybe I didn't. I'll have to look into that. But I mean, you can see what Apollo you can see. It's substantial, one way or another, and I've turned off a lot of the autogen. Go ahead, you. Okay, uh, Pete, uh, throughout the flight, your oxygen consumption has been slightly higher than previous flights by approximately 10 percent. 10 percent. This is no problem. Are as, they carrying uh, a pet? Extrapolating that to end of mission still gives us plenty of uh, oxygen available. In an attempt to try to figure out why, though, we have a Stratford couple of questions. Stratford Marsh. Primarily with respect to your use of the UR. Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park, this is. Approximately how long after you. And London Stadium. Okay, so that's London Stadium. Oh, God, clouds. Before you close it, over. Great. Come on. We want to see the sights. We usually leave it on until the O2 highlight comes on, which is uh, a couple of minutes worth of inning. Okay, and what position do you use? Do you leave the cover valve and the waste management overboard drain valve? There we go. Okay, uh, so URA. to our left is London City Airport. Usually uh, shut the... Uh, and the Thames is in front of us, of course. Off. There's the Millennium Dome. Leave the cover and vent. Roger, we got that. We'll massage that. Thank you. Very spiky. Okay, we probably have used a little more oxygen through that uh, 
And uh, we noticed on our plot that we were running a little low on oxygen also. Roger. It's all the jokes they're making. Laughing takes up more oxygen. Well, I can see the London Bridge, the Tower Bridge there already. And the Shard and all. Okay, we're looking at it. Stand by. Okay, we've got it. 12, thank you. Okay, we're parking. Roger. I wonder how this is at A. Probably pretty bad. Eight. <laughs> this is with the autogen, you can see. This is with all that stuff, and then poof, it's gone. Back. Gone. We'll have to leave it off for now. Houston, uh, you're rolling into the high gain limits. Uh, give me Omni Charlie, please. Roger. Okay, so Tower Bridge, Tower of London, very clearly visible. I don't know all the buildings here, but there are certainly some familiar ones. Houston, uh, give us Omni Delta, please. You can see the London Eye there. As well as uh, Houses of Parliament. If we side. take a left here, that's Buckingham Palace, I believe. Yeah, real well. I'm mean, sorry, uh, right. Very reflective itself, and so it looks St. James like Park in front, sunlight. Buckingham Palace sunlight. Garden in the back. But you can, for example, look out and read the uh, marks on the commander's overhead window. You can see all the quads, the struts. And they're pretty up here in her shine. And back here is of, uh, Hyde Park. A great green task, and though. Kensington Gardens. Raj, understand. Okay, we should probably just head towards the uh, airport. Control at 87 hours nine minutes. We're now Get eight that minutes view, away though. from loss of signal. Uh, here in mission control, presently changing shifts. Flight director Pete Frank will be replacing flight director Glenn Lunny. The capsule communicator on this shift uh, will continue to be astronaut Paul White's for the first part of the shift. Uh, Don Lind taking over at about 4.30 this morning. Uh, 
the lunar orbit insertion number two maneuver scheduled to occur 39 minutes from now. Uh, that burn is targeted for an orbit of 54 by 66 nautical miles. Time of ignition is tentatively set at 87 hours, 48 minutes, 47 seconds, uh, with a burn time of 17.07 seconds and a uh, total delta V okay, of 100. Turning towards Heathrow, you can see it on the horizon second. there. As we near the end of this. And 25% on the throttle. Front side pass. All systems on the CSM continuing to look very good. Uh, flight director Glenn Money will be getting a final status from his flight controllers prior to loss of signal. And we expect uh, passing along a go for the lunar orbit insertion number two maneuver. At uh, 87 hours, 11 minutes, this is Apollo Control Houston. Houston, five minutes to LOS. Okay. We were at about a hundred knots only. Okay, Houston, uh, we just called up. So here I'm going to lower the flaps a little bit. Then throttle up a bit. Roger, 12. 50%. With the chipmunk, I didn't take a whole lot of time lining up with the runway ahead, but this is different. Hello, Apollo 12, Houston, your go for LOI 2, and your pippas look real good. Roger, Houston, go for LOI. Yeah, it's been a long night here, too. <laughs> Allow some more buildings as I land. Okay, uh, on the left of the runway there, the Pappy lights, they should the be two the white and two red. If they're all uh, red, you're too low. If they're all white, you're too high. Away from for I can't really see, make them out very well right now. Scheduled to reacquire the spacecraft in about 45 minutes. And as you heard, uh, gonna the drop the landing pass, gear, but with this lever, it seems to rush it. Well, let's, let's see. All okay. On the spacecraft, continuing to look absolutely nominal. Did its whole animation fine? We have completed the uh, change of ship at uh, this time. Uh, Flight director Pete Frank now. Uh, taking over from flight director Glenn Lunny. That looks more red than white to me, minutes, but there's uh, uh, some white there. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we're now at uh, 87 hours, uh, 44 minutes into the flight. Uh, we're less than five minutes away from our scheduled time of ignition for lunar orbit insertion. Using more flaps uh, burn now. Number two. This burn designed to uh, lower our apaloon and uh, bring us to an orbit of 66 nautical miles by 54 nautical Retrimming. miles. Retrimming. 
the burn is scheduled for some 16 or 17 seconds in duration. We're presently passing uh, around the far side of the moon. Uh, we uh, are scheduled uh, to reacquire the spacecraft in 16 minutes. This is Apollo Control Houston. Oh, that's too white. Okay. Throttle down. Up. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, <laughs> okay, we well, be, uh, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Two at this time. We're at 87 hours, uh, 49 minutes into the flight. Uh, we will not reacquire until 11 minutes uh, from f uh, 45 seconds from Oh, mark. carburetor, this is not, okay, I'll, I'll Apollo increase the throttle. Control, yes. That's fine, I'll increase the throttle. I should add the carburetor heat. Not the time for it, though. Uh, anyway, yeah, let's just focus on landing. Going 80 knots right now, very leisurely. This is Apollo Control Houston. We're about uh, 30 seconds away from uh, time of reacquisition of the uh, Apollo 12 spacecraft. We'll leave the line open at this time. Uh, Apollo 12 is now on its third revolution around the moon. Without the, all the peculiarities of starting the DC-3 slash C-47, it's a fairly calm Apollo plane Control, to fly. Uh, we have data at this time. Still throttling way down. Oh, I, I think we actually touched down there. I Hello, didn't 12. understand where the wheels were. Hello, Houston Apollo 12, LOI 2, burn complete. The burn was on time. The burn time was uh -huh. 17 seconds. The residuals were plus 0.3. Can we make that taxi Zero, one? Plus 0.1. Uh, well, we'll make the, the field next to it anyway. Minus 4.4. 4. Fuel, 35 decimal 4. Oxidizer, 35 decimal 9. Increase 110. We're in a 66.3 by 54.7, according to us. Over to you. Okay, flaps up. Roger, 12, we can copy. Uh, I'm not going to follow every little inundation and of this taxiway. Uh, oh, drift. Roger. Uh, uh, tail draggers don't exactly steer on the ground great. <laughs> You heard that report from uh, Pete Conrad aboard the spacecraft. 66.350. Well, at least this one seven. steers. Alan the chipmunk had issues. Off the uh, target of opportunity chart here uh, in order. And we're trying to get as much of that stuff done as we can. I guess I'll park over to right here. Roger, 12. Okay, I'm going to pause the audio right there. As I find a parking space here, we have arrived at London. So, uh, with this, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.